Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, along with Clay Johnston. Clay is going to give us a first-hand view of Tesla ownership. The topic today specifically is not just Tesla ownership, but the future of the road trip, something that's near and dear to me. I haven't done one in a long time. Welcome, Clay. And I want to kind of set this up Clay and I know a little bit about each other. He's done some web work for Loop, done an incredible job. And as we were most recently talking about some updates, you mentioned something that caught my attention, that you had purchased a Model Y recently, first time Tesla owner. And I want to start with maybe back up. Tell me what your last two cars were. Well, thanks for having me, Gene. So I've been sort of an Audi guy for the last... I would say eight years. So I went through a couple A4s, a Q5, and, and then my last car was an S4. So I see a progression here, Clay, kind of <laughs> moving up the, the uh, Audi chain, if you will. Right. So the last one's S4. That's a nice performance car. Can you give us a sense what that vehicle lists for new? Uh, lists for new, I believe it's in the 60s range, somewhere around there, 65-ish. Okay. So it was a great car, a very loud car. My wife didn't like that, the fact that it was so loud. She would be a little embarrassed to take it to the grocery store. That was but... part of the design, right? Just to have yeah. the loud mufflers. Okay. Well, and that's what sold me on it too. And I got in that thing and I was an A4 guy. I'm not a fast driver at all. And I got in that thing. I turned it on. I looked at my Audi rep, but about the last three cars from, I'm like, oh, this is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. A fun topic too, just around EVs and the sound, uh, the lack of the sound. And it's right. funny to talk to people in advertising that do auto advertising, how much they scrutinize on the sound of the engine, those car commercials. But so well, I thought are. it was really important to me until I got the Tesla. Now I appreciate the quietness. So okay. it's, it, can go, cool, it can go either way. So, but you're a happy Audi person. And what, can you just give us a sense on timing of when you started to think about making the jump to electric? Oh, before the Model Y came out. Uh, so, you know, Model 3s, I had my eye on that one, but I'm a bigger guy. I don't really fit in a Model 3 all that well. So then of course I gravitated to the X, but the X was just a little beyond my price point or what I was willing to spend. Yeah, most people's price point, I would yeah. add. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a sweet car. a hundred car grand and, probably. Right, I didn't really like the conventionality of the X. It was too much like a regular car. If I was gonna make the jump, I wanted something really clean. And when I saw that Model Y come out, I'm like this is perfect, it's the right form factor. Clay, even before that, you're happy with your Audi, your gas powered car. What made you wanna think about making the jump to electric? You know, I wish I could say it was for ecological reasons. I think that was a more of a side benefit. For me, it's the tech. It's all in the tech and it's all in the being able to charge at home and not having to go to a gas station. After being an owner, I'm seeing a lot more. Wait, did you let me one more question? Did you have any friends that had Teslas that took you for a test drive? I had one friend, a chef here in town, who had a Model Three for a while, and he constantly made fun of me because he was the one who got one before me. <laughs> okay, but so you know that's part of the Tesla advertising network. Essentially, is this referral network piece, and so this chef maybe had a little bit of an influence on you. You, you decide from the time that you decided to purchase a Tesla to the time that you actually purchased it, uh, weeks, months, years? Months. So I put in my pre order for the Model Y, I guess it was late 2019, probably October ish. And they started delivering in March of 2020. I got mine April 15th of 2020. So, okay. So before you even do that, so. You have to make some changes to your home, right? And how did you yeah. think about the charging at home component, making sure that the tech, if you will, is good there? And second, what was your thoughts on range anxiety? Yeah, so I live in a single family home. So getting the charger installed is a pretty easy process. I think people with, that live in multi-dwelling households have a lot harder time with that. I know my son in California lives in an apartment. He just has to use the supercharging network, uh, which is fine for him. But for me, How much was, did you pay to get on top of the vehicle to get the charging, the electrician come in to do all that? Yeah, 500 for the actual charger itself. I'm using the Tesla branded wall charger and then another 800 for the labor and installation. Okay, so that's, I mean, it was measurable, but not a deal breaker. How about the 
frequent concern about range anxiety. How did you think about that? <laughs> yeah, so that was a big concern of mine. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on people taking road trips and what their methodology was. And really after, after Are you a road trip that, guy? Is, no, is that, I haven't okay. taken a road trip in 20 years. And but, right when I got this thing, I'm like, said to my wife, I'm like, we got to take a road trip in this thing. Just, <laughs> just check it out. And so the longest I'd gone is from Minneapolis to Chicago. That was our, that was our idea of a road trip to go see my mother-in-law. So traveling from Minneapolis down to Florida was, you know, that was something totally different for us. I want to just quickly make an observation as someone like myself who doesn't own an electric car, does not. I'm always surprised at the number of times when people, one of the reasons why they don't buy an electric car is because they talk about this trip that they will take. Uh, you know, they're trying to future-proof their vehicle, obviously, but that one-off trip to go see Mount Rushmore or whatever it would be, <laughs> I'm always surprised that that ends up being a hurdle, but here you are, you got through the hurdle with YouTube and then you make the jump, you decide you're going to take your new Model Y to Florida. And I just want to get a sense of first, how do you plan the charging of it? That's probably first and foremost, you got to figure out how far you're going to go every day and where right. your hotel is and where you're charging. How did you navigate that? Yeah, I think the hardest part was knowing what hotel or what city we were going to end up in, just because I didn't know how much of a delay there'd be going through the different charging stations. And, you know, we had to stop more often than in a gas powered vehicle. Absolutely. Okay. Probably. Let me, inter- Clay, let me interrupt. Even before, as you're kind of planning the trip out, how does Tesla make it easier? What do they do to make it easy for you to figure out I mean, you're, you're thinking about these charge stations, aren't right. you, before you even start the trip? Is that accurate? Yeah, but Tesla's website, that's where they're lacking in trip planning. You can get in the car and plan your trip in there, but I'm not going to do that. So there's a website called A Better Route Planner, and I believe they're based out of Europe somewhere. They've got a fantastic system where you can save your trips. They'll calculate which superchargers you need to go to, how long you need to stop. So I used a better route planner instead of Tesla's tools. Gotcha. And is that where your planning of the trip started with yeah. a better route planner? Fascinating. Exactly. How does it work? Do they say uh, Minneapolis to Florida? And then yeah. and, and, they'll, some... and they'll give you directions just like a Google map would, except they're going to plan those charging stops in there. And they're going to plan them a little differently than Tesla will in the car. Tesla wants you to stop the least amount of charging stops that you can. A better route planner will have you charge more often, but they'll have you charge faster. So, and I don't know if you know this, but as the battery depletes, if you don't deplete that battery down to a certain amount, when you plug into a supercharger, it's not going to be as fast. You want to get it down as much as you can because that supercharging is really fast from, you know, zero to about 60 or 70%. And then that last 40% or 30% is significantly slower. Okay, I had no idea. And, and maybe just to quickly frame that in too, is that I suspect in the, the planning tool that you used, you put your make and model in that. And- exactly, yeah. Okay. You put your make and model and it figures out range and things like that. It's got your range on that. What is a typical stop? How long would you actually be charging for through a better planner? Yeah, a, a typical stop would be about 30 to 40 minutes. But there is some stops we'd stop for 15 minutes because that's all we needed to get to the hotel or or whatever for the next stop. So, okay, yeah. Would they tell you, would it say you need to depart at 100% charge at this point or would it No, it would would tell you, you can depart at 80% because you're going to get to the next stop when your battery is down to 10% or something like that. So So they let you know what the charge level is before you need to jet. Absolutely. Okay, got it. And where at like 15 minutes are these like in Target parking lots, McDonald's? What were you doing these? Yeah, all over the place. I mean, off of a lot of interstates and they were super convenient. The only thing I would say is the bathroom break aspect of a gas station is a huge benefit. Um, So you you would have to plan that differently. Well, you just adjust the way you think. We stopped at more rest stops than gas stations if we had to go to the bathroom. So that was pretty convenient stopping at a rest stop. But you know, when you're pumping gas, you want to be able to go to the bathroom. Well, the superchargers sometimes aren't near a gas station. So got it. You don't have access to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. Targets, high V's, hotel parking lots. I mean, it was all over the place. And best guess, average time between your stops to recharge? Two to two and a half hours. That seems pretty frequent. It does seem pretty frequent, but I'm the kind of guy that likes to get on stretch his legs every once in a while too. And so I would say if you're in a rush to get somewhere, this is not ready for you. It would be a gas vehicle trip if you want to make the least amount of stops and you want to get there the quickest. If you're just on a vacation, on a road trip, and you don't mind 
stopping every once in a while, taking a look around and stretching, this is definitely the way to go. And that's, that's really what we wanted to do. Got it. Makes a ton of sense. Kind of getting back to the roots of what a road trip should be all about actually seeing what's right. around us, but still stopping every two to two and a half hours, you get capped off. When you pull up to a charging station, is, are you always fingers crossed that there's not a line to get in there or do you have some visibility? <laughs> we had no problems going down to Florida or coming back. I was just in Los Angeles visiting my son. We had to wait at almost every supercharger in the LA area. It was comical. So, but no problems anywhere else. Okay. Well, maybe just quickly on that thought in the LA area, how long would you wait to get a charging uh, I think our longest was 30 minutes, but typically right around 15 to 20. And it probably feels like an hour. Yeah. Uh, and man, then you go to places like Malibu and it's just so packed that we just turned around and went somewhere else. So is there software that tells you as you approach, it gives you a sense like there's a line here, don't... Yeah, it'll tell you how many stalls are open. And with the new software, the new holiday update, it will actually show you on the map on each pinpoint how many stalls are open on there. But you don't know what the line is, the queue is. No. Okay, that's the deal breaker, isn't it? That would be cool though. Okay, yeah, note to Tesla. That's right. Queue management software. So how about the actual driving experience? How would you describe it versus... So I purchased the full self-driving package, which at the time was $7,000, now it's $10,000. And the feature that I got to use because of that was let's navigate on autopilot. And I turned all the features on. I'm like, I want to put this thing through its paces. And so I turned on auto lane change. It didn't have to get a confirmation from me. So as we're going down the interstate, if I'm in the right lane and it comes up on a truck, it puts the blinker on goes around the truck, gets back in its lane. (laughs) What's that like initially? I would equate it to teaching my 16 year old to drive where you were just white knuckling it (laughs) the whole way, hoping that this car is not going to make a mistake. And then you begin to trust it. It makes enough good decisions. And by the end of the trip, I was like, you know, I'm looking around and getting a drink of water or whatever, Mm -hmm. but, you know, keeping my eye on the road. Incredible. And I don't know how many hours you'd be driving per day. Did you feel that there was a difference in your fatigue? Right. So the fatigue was non-existent. So typically my wife and I would swap duties driving. This time she kept asking me, do you want me to take over? And I'm like, no, I feel fine. This is not a problem. So I think it was a combination between the full self-driving or the autopilot and the more frequent stops. I didn't feel as cooped up in the car for four hours at a time. So I would drive eight or nine hours a day and no problems at all. After you got the trip done, did you calculate your cost savings with gas? Yes. So I spent 180 on supercharging. $180. $180. And that was 3000 miles uh, that we traveled back and forth because we went to Florida, then up to Atlanta and then back to Minneapolis. And unfortunately, fortunately for some people, gas prices are really low this last summer. So it wasn't a huge savings, but I would say I saved at least two to $300 in gas. It says a lot. I mean, that reminds me too of why these transformations can take longer than many think, ultimately be bigger. But the, just thinking about that, the low price of gas and that uh, was kind of one of those side selling points to EVs is they're cheaper, total cost of ownership. But Absolutely. I can see how low gas price is a negative impact on EV adoption. You made the jump anyway. You're new. You're still in the honeymoon phase with your Model Y here. Thinking forward, are you sold on EVs? Are you sold on Tesla? Apple comes out with a car. Are you interested in looking at that? Where do you think uh, yeah. a few years well, from now? All of my friends would tell you that I'm one of the biggest Apple fanboys. So if Apple comes out with a car, I'm going to have to take a serious look at it. But uh, I'm sold on the Tesla. I mean, I think the software updates are just mind blowing how they can do this. And I've been wishing for this for years with other car manufacturers that why can't you just update the software and give me more on the car? And they're giving you everything. I mean, it's just, it's basically a software and hardware platform that can constantly be upgraded. And the safety features are just amazing. I mean, even on the road driving down there at one point, I'm passing a truck and I'm kind of looking over to my left and the alarm goes off, which If anybody's gone through that in a Tesla is, you know, it's enough to make you have to clean your shorts afterwards, but the alarm goes off and the car breaks. My wife is like, what happened? I looked at the footage on the dash cam. Well, the truck next to me was coming over to hit me and the car reacted faster than I could. 
So just that That's fact, I'm amazing. sold. I'm sold. That is a good testimony. Just a couple parting thoughts from my end is one thing I've always been impressed about is how when people get Teslas, how excited they are to tell their story. And I had to bend your arm here to get you to come on today, but it's a powerful endorsement of Tesla. Also, that you're open to, you know, Apple, if they do come out with something, they've got such a strong product lineup, you'd entertain at least that model as well. And third, and most importantly, I just got a better understanding of the road trip of the future. And it makes me want to get a Tesla and want to take a road trip. Thanks to you, Clay. And on behalf of Clay and Gene and Luke TV, bye for now.